The Yon ticket you just saw wasn't real, or it wasn't until a few days ago when I made it. For those unfamiliar, this card is not just a cool collectible, but it's also the key to Southern Island in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. This island contains a legendary Pokemon not normally available on your version, and evokes a fun, mysterious atmosphere, something that Gen 3 as a whole is known for. This atmosphere is further enhanced by the way you get the event into your copy of Ruby or Sapphire. You see, in America, and only America, you can scan the Eon ticket into the Nintendo e-reader, and using a link cable, you can send an event to your game. That event is small, it's just a chat with your dad and then he'll give you the Eon ticket, but from there you could go to Southern Island anytime you would like. In Japan and Europe, you would get this event by either going to a real-life event where you could connect to someone who has a link cable and a special event cartridge, and they would send the event to your game, or you could actually mail your cartridge to Nintendo and they would put the event on your cartridge for you. And while the mail-in service did last a surprisingly long time in some countries, up to 2017 in Italy, the time has passed for you to be able to take advantage of either of these things. The only real option at this point would be to scan the Eon ticket using an e-reader into an English copy of Ruby or Sapphire, and then record mix that copy with an international version, which can be quite tedious. Or I guess you could extract your save and then hack the event into it, but that could feel inauthentic. So while I was working on translations of all of my custom events that I made for Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, check out the video if you haven't seen it, I thought it would be a fun and quick project to get as authentic of an event as possible into every language game via the Nintendo e-reader. The first big issue I would come across was the... Because corporations have to ruin everything, the Nintendo e-reader is actually region locked, even though the Game Boy Advance itself is not. So you can actually put a Nintendo e-reader or an e-card plus reader into any Game Boy Advance from any region, and it will work just fine. But the cards themselves have several different region locks on them. So to understand how the region locks work, we first need to understand that an e-card has two different parts to it, mainly. It has a header, and it has a VPK. The header contains information about the card for the e-reader. Stuff like how big the card is, is it one card or two cards, and what language is it. To edit the region value, we just have to change this location in a hex editor. Now there's three options to pick from. Japanese, American, and can you guess the third one? If you guessed Europe, you would be wrong. It's actually Japan again. You see, the e-reader got released twice in Japan. The first one was just the e-card reader, which does not have a link cable port. So we want to be using the Japanese eCard Reader Plus. This has a link cable port so we can send data to Ruby and Sapphire. And we're going to be using the Eon Ticket as an example for how to deal with the American e-reader. And we're going to be using the Japanese Reggie Decoration Present as an example for what region code to use for the Japanese eCard Reader Plus. Uh, luckily, I don't have to change this every single time. I can use a compiler setting to make sure it compiles for the right region. But it's still good to know how it works in case I have to hack stuff up later on. The second region check is going to be a lot more difficult to change. It is actually within the Eon ticket data itself. At first, I thought I could do this using a compiler setting. It actually has one for what language you're playing on. But every time I did that and tried to connect it to a game's respective language, it would throw me this error. So this is different from a normal region error, but it still means that something is going wrong here and that the data isn't meant for this version. So after a lot of digging, I found a great post by Hacky on the Glitch Shitty Research Laboratory's archive forums about how the Eon Ticket card is formatted. So according to Hacky, there's actually three different region checks in the Eon Ticket itself. And if we look at what our compiler is doing, it's only changing one of them. Okay, so we just have to change them manually in a hex editor then. The region codes are as follows. One for Japanese, two for English, three for French, four for German, five for Italian, and seven for Spanish. Why did they skip six? Is there like an unreleased language or something? So if we change all of these to a one, it will send to Japanese games. Great. Uh, it actually works with two for English as well and four for German. But if we're trying to do this for French, Italian, or Spanish, curiously, it doesn't work. So after some experimentation, I found that if you change the first region check to not match the game for French, Italian, or Spanish, it would give you the standard error message, which is loading error. It doesn't really give you anything specific. But changing the other two to any other language wouldn't matter. It would still give you the data is not meant for this version check, which is pretty weird. I was pretty stumped here. 
I couldn't figure out why for only these three languages, the second and third language checks would be different, but not the first one, and what values they should be. But it was then I had an epiphany. You see, recently I had watched Absolblog's Pokemon fix Pokemon Box, where he removed all of the language checks and he removed all of the Pokedex restrictions, which is awesome. And he did that by setting the values for the flags to be zero instead of what they're supposed to be. And I thought, hmm, maybe these just need to be forced to zero. Tried that and it didn't work. But I used my programmer brain and I thought, what's another annoying number maybe? And I put FF in there, which is the highest value that a byte could be, or 255. And lo and behold, it worked. All three of those games work if I just change it to 255. Okay, so I can send the English Eon Ticket event to all of the European games, and I can do that using the American e-reader. And if I load it into the Japanese e-card reader plus to send it to a Japanese game, ooh, <laughs> it doesn't seem to like rendering English text very much. Well, that actually leads me to another thing I'm gonna tackle, localization. While it's cool that these events send, they're all in English. And I could have called it there as the text shows up in every game fine, well, except for Japanese. Uh, but I thought it would be fun to localize everything and give every single region the proper event Eon Ticket experience. So once I was committed to this train of thought, I decided to reach out to my Discord to see if any bilingual members of my community were willing to help me out. And to my surprise, tons of people were willing to translate not just the Eon Ticket, but my custom e-card events. So thank you to everyone who helped. There isn't too much to say about the localization process other than we tried to keep everything the same as it was in English. What I mean by this is that if the English game used an in-game turn like key items, we would display it exactly how the French game displayed the term key items. And we did that for every single instance of the game using like native text or something like that. I wanted these events to look and feel as legitimate as possible, as if they could have been real official events. Everyone was looking things up on Bulbapedia and YouTube and even booting their own games up to see how everything worked. It was awesome to see, and I appreciate the effort that went into it from every single person who helped me out. Once all the text was translated, it was a simple matter of swapping it all out for whatever language I wanted to do. The German text was actually already officially translated, thank you to the debug German ROM for that, and there's actually a preserved official Japanese event that I had my hands on, and I used that text for the Japanese event as well, so both of those are official. Onto some notes uh, and quirks of the translations that I've been provided here. Uh, the first one is that there's actually some typos and errors in the American Eon Ticket event. Uh, this is the father, instead of using a colon to display his name, they use a quotation mark, which is very strange looking. Now, presumably they would have fixed this for the European release of the games, but I thought it would be fun to leave it in and sort of help differentiate this from any official text, and also just to try and keep it as authentic as possible. We don't know how they necessarily would have done it, or I didn't know anyway. Okay, that's the Ruby and Sapphire side of it worked out, so let's take a look at what the e-reader's actually doing. I have to change two things here, the text on the e-card itself and the sprite of the Eon ticket. I would like that to be in the native language if possible. So replacing the text is simple, it's just a matter of taking my translator's text and putting it there instead of the English text. However, none of the special European language characters exist in the Eon Ticket file, as far as I can tell. Uh, the only one that exists is the letter E with an accent over it, because, uh, you know, Pokemon has that in the name. Um, so unfortunately, I just had to replace them with similar looking characters. I think that I would be able to make custom... Um, custom letters appear in the ROM, but I wanted this to be a quick and easy project. So yes, it is, you know, very silly looking. I'm sure a lot of the words are just gonna seem wrong to native speakers, but that's the best that I could do. And with Japanese, I simply could not figure out how to get this thing to render Japanese text. I couldn't do it. Even if I typed in Japanese, it would still appear super buggy. Uh, so I just deleted it. The Japanese uh, eCard Plus reader has no text on it at all. I also hope to fix that in the future, but for now, that's the best that I can do. I hope it's okay with everybody here. So with all of the text done to the best of my ability, the next thing I had to do was try and change the sprite of the Eon Ticket itself, which I think I could do 100% successfully. The first thing I had to do for the sprite was extract all of the data from the Eon Ticket itself. I did this by loading up MGBA and clicking view sprites and then extracting all of the little pieces of it. And uh, I was able to reassemble it in GIMP. So once the card was in GIMP, I duplicated the layer, and on the upper layer, I deleted all the text from it. From there, I scoured the internet trying to find a font that matched. It took me a while, but I found one that was really, really close. It wasn't exact, but I think it'll do good. The only other thing to note here is that for the Japanese version, I used the bold font. Uh, this is because with, without being bold, it was a little bit too thin, I think. It didn't match the English event well enough. 
In addition, uh, another note for the Japanese one is I didn't use any kanji. This isn't because I can't type kanji. But that is true, but that's not the reason. Uh, none of the Japanese Gen 3 games use kanji at all. So I thought if this was a real e-card, it also probably would not be using kanji. Uh, so that's why I made that decision. So I think these all turned out great. They look as close to the real event as I think I'm going to be able to do with my limited artistic skills. Not that this was a super challenging artistic thing. Uh, after I'm done with them in GIMP, I actually have to put them into a special program called Grit. This will then convert them to 4BPP and to the palette file that I need to include in the Eon ticket. Uh, this is a huge pain as well, and they're a little bit too big in terms of file size, but I made it work okay. At this point, you think I would be 100% done because the events are working and translated both on the e-card and in the games themselves. But I got one more thing I want to do, which is translate the physical card itself. The whole point of this is to be able to print and make a physical e-card yourself, so I thought, well, I might as well make a nice design for this. After looking at the US Eon ticket, I think I found the font that they used. If this isn't the exact font they used, it is a damn near 100% match. So I'm really happy that I found this. I used all of my translator's text as you know before, and uh, bam, we have the front of the Eon ticket. So now if you print the dot code yourself, you can print this as well. So it will look, I think, pretty good. With that done, everything about the Eon ticket that I want to translate is translated, and everyone could print a nice looking Eon ticket for their collection if they wanted, regardless of the language. Now, the way this works is that if you're playing one of the European games, you have to use the American e-reader. If you're playing on a Japanese game, you can use either the eCard Reader Plus or the American e-reader. I'll provide different files for both of them. This is because that one doesn't use any language, so it doesn't matter. It'll work on both of them. Well, that's it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this little uh, shorter video. Uh, the next time you'll see me tinkering with the Eon ticket is going to be translating every single one of my custom DLC events into every single language possible so everyone can then do them. In addition to that, you guys will see me, you know, hopefully soon have one more new DLC event. I won't spoil it, but I think you all know what it's going to be. Lastly, if you guys use any of these custom Eon tickets, please tag me in them. I would love to see it getting some use. I love the e-reader, as if you can't tell, um, and so I would love to see other people using this stuff. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I hope you enjoy your trip to Isola Remota. Bye-bye.